everyone, welcome to Newcastle Fans TV. It's deadline day. Newcastle have their man, Emil Kroth. If I pronounce it right, a Krat. You tell me. If you're ever Swedish, if you speak the Swedish tongue, let us know in the comments down there below if we pronounced it rightly. So before we get on with um, what what he gets up to on the pitch, is he is he offensive, is he uh, defensive and so on. We'll have a look at how he got on last season as well and how he compares to DeAndre Yedlin and Javier Mankiw. So first of all, as you can see, I uh, just want to say thank yous to helping us get over 15,000 followers on our Facebook and over 7,000 on our Instagram as well, which pushes us over to 48,752 people that are following across the brand as well. So thank you very much for that. We're going strong. So let's get on with today's video so thanks for that okay so as we know Emil Kroth was pictured in Newcastle yesterday um, uh, Serena hello Serena uh, so yeah so he was pictured at the training ground by it was the Chronicle who, who took this picture uh, looks like it's set to be a long-term deal this has just been recorded before it gets announced so yeah so it's a long-term deal good age he's just let's return 25 we'll talk like i say about yedlin and manq in just a minute but um yeah it's a signing at least isn't it and hopefully we'll get one or two more on later on today right then so as i touch upon uh, he's he's tall he's five foot eleven uh, 25 years of age just turned 25 literally just last week plays it right back as we already know played for a means if i pronounce that right if he's french speaking please let him know if i'm correcting correct myself and obviously we know he's a swedish international with 20 caps so you're probably thinking okay is there anything special about that you're probably saying no not really it probably looks average yeah Possibly. Okay, so moving on to these clubs. Uh, he's playing, and again, I apologise if I didn't pronounce these right. Uh, Lagans, Osters, Helsingborgs, Bologna. Now, the big move was Bologna. Of course, that's a big move to one of Europe's top four, top four leagues. And he went to Bologna. It wasn't a massive regular. He was in and out of that side, but he got his chance. And obviously, being young, he wants to play first team football. So he went to League Un, played for Means on loan, impressed them enough to buy them. It was a small fee. And of course, he's moved on to the Premier League which is a we know it's a step up in class from the other leagues that he's played in but a uh, promising sign he was a regular last season we're not just signing somebody who was in and out the squad last season he played 35 games 33 of those were starts got one assist which i haven't put on the graphic but scored one goal as well so yeah it's all right it's all right again you're probably not looking at thinking that doesn't jump out for me however move on to the next one his style of play where's he gonna play and how is he going to fit in if he does play in the wing back system or at four at the back so his style of play which is interesting he plays the ball off the ground often and he likes to do long balls as soon as i think of a right back who does i think of danny simpson for some reason straight away because he loved that long ball mike williamson loved the long ball as well when he played at center back as well doesn't dive into tackles which is interesting so he's, he's when you don't dive into tackles that's a case of you back off okay you try and beat me sort of player but this links in well i think because he's weak at tackling maybe that's why he doesn't go diving in because obviously who scored rating is not very strong it's weak crossing isn't great so that indicates he's not an attacking fullback or he's not great at crossing so it'll be one of those two more on that in a sec and of course his passing isn't great as well but no strengths no stand out strengths i thought his height might play a little bit into that but whoscore.com thick say it's got no significant strengths so cheers for that who was signing here right uh, okay so this is the formation Again, I mean, I can't apologise, I've been pronounced it wrong. Played in League Earn last season. As you can see, Kratz over here, and they played a flat back four. Now, you've got to remember, this is a side that only managed to stay up by four points. So, it was a defensive side that were trying to get a lot of points and shut up shop, especially in particular, away from home. So, he plays four at the back. And interesting, the reason why I've got the Sweden picture over there is because Sweden play that system as well with four at the back. It's not first choice because Lustig is, but when he plays, he plays as the full back in a flat back four so he's used to playing there can he convert into a wing back system because we know steve bruce has played that formation all pre-season and i'll be shocked if he doesn't go with that against arsenal i want to highlight this this is his heat map last season have a look where he's most 
what average position is is inside his own half over here a massive area of red patch for me that indicates that he's more defensive probably because I means played defensively as I've touched upon so that probably goal in line and line but didn't get forward as much I can guarantee you I haven't even looked at it and I probably should have put the comparison up but I can imagine Mankio and particularly Yedlin will be a lot higher activity up this side of the pitch so this indicates for me that he doesn't bomb up and down that pitch so we've got a position at right wing back so we know if Steve Bruce this is the formation since he came in yes I know Ben Dawson had the first game played for the back were awful against Wolves yeah whatever but going after that when Bruce came in he's been playing the wing back system all pre-season we know this is the formation that he's likely to go with because I'll be shocked maybe tweak here and he puts a 10 in there but the left wing back will bomb up and down Matt Rich has been playing there but we know he's got a light, slight knock so maybe Jetro Williams but over here Mancuso's actually had a great pre-season to be fair Yedlin's only just come back in a pre-season but where's his Croft fit in this if he's going to go in the wing back system already for me Croft looks better defensively but going forward he doesn't look so great I, you can read too much into stats we're not that but nobody seems to know much of the Swedish international so this is the best you gotta get people right so, speaking of those two guys, if I've just put, some, put touched upon, get your word to it, Mankio and DeAndre Yedlin. Right, a couple of things I want to bring up here is that the rate, and this is, this is a little bit worrying because obviously these two play Premier League games. Yes, I know Mankio's played a lot less games than both of them, but he scores worse, only just minded than DeAndre Yedlin. Look, DeAndre Yedlin didn't have a great season last season. Mankio comes strong towards the end of the season, but he's got a better passing accuracy than both of them. However, remember what I said earlier on when we looked at the graphic is that he plays, well, who scored say that he likes to play a lot of long balls. So if he is playing long balls, have we unearthed another Florian Lejeune? We know that Fabian Shea can ping a pass as well. We know that Shea can bring it out, of course. It's different. But have a look again. He's yellow cards too. Yeah, we're not going to read it in that. Uh, assists. Only one assist from 35 games. Even Yedlin has got, you know, two. Mancu's got three and they've played a lot less games. Again, indicating that these two, the current team players who have been on the books a little while, are better going forward. And also, if you have a look at his aerial duels, he's a lot higher than the other two quite easy because he's five foot eleven. You would expect him to be winning a lot of a lot of challenges. He's nearly he's nearly well, he's nearly a six foot lad. So that's Emil Croth. Of course, we'll be talking about that more in the Black and White show on Sunday. It's going to be a busy day for Sunday. Uh, you know, we've got uh, boycotting protests. We're not going to the game. We'll be in a bar. We're going to film that. We've got then EFTV up. And then we've got the, the uh, live show. So it's going to be a busy day for Sunday. Loads of stuff coming. Uh, tomorrow, well, technically later today now, uh, is deadline day. We know this. And me, Johnny and Jonathan are going to be hanging around St. James' Park. If there's any activity, which we don't think it's going to be massive amounts, possibly one or two might leave we'll be bringing that as well we might do a live video who knows but we're also going to be doing a couple of vids down there pop down and we're also grabbing Alex Hurst who is the chair of the NUST the Newcastle United Supporters Trust and we're going to throw some questions at him about all things Newcastle you want horrible questions we're going to try and give him some difficult ones which i'm sure he's used to anyways but that is the roundup of emil craft we'll try to dig a little much a, a little bit for you it's difficult because there's not much on him but you know we'll, we'll talk more about him in the transfer window as a summary in tomorrow's video on deadline day have a good day everyone hopefully we'll get another one over the line